you saved it okay so i was Please. thinking that you could help me to open it using this app are you using a laptop or a computer okay it's fine it's fine just share your do you, do you mind sharing your screen and i guide you through You can please share your screen and I see and I show you how to how to how to do that, how to save it to get your work load from your computer after saving it. I also see Ruthie. Ruthie, please uh, go ahead, unmute and uh, let's uh, let's get what you have to say. You can go ahead and unmute. And then ask. Okay. So since there are no questions, let me just share my screen. And then we, if my network, my network may be disturbing, but uh, if I break off, just stay on the line, I'll always be back today. The network has been disturbing me since uh, since morning. But just a moment, let me try to check. So if you have a, a question and you feel like uh, you want to text in the chat, also feel free to text in the chat or just raise up your hand. I don't want to move forward without uh, answering your questions. So I'm just waiting for one or two people to, to ask, then I can move on. Now, yesterday we were doing the introductions of uh, Scratch. We were looking at the interface, how to how to build uh, uh, small, small, small animations which can move, which can talk. Today we want to start looking at how we can come up with games and how we can actually uh, improve on our animations. Yesterday we were just having the cut to move through on the two costumes. We don't even know how to draw our own our own sprite. So today we are going to be looking at that, how we can come up with our own sprites. So hey, let me check my network. Thanks, thanks a lot. I was saying that today we we are going to be building uh, our first game and also uh, building other projects. We want to learn by building projects. And this is how we are going to be able to understand other concepts and how they are applied actually in Scratch and also in other programming languages. So as we build uh, our game as today, we also have to learn new concepts and also how to paint our own sprites or backdrops. Anytime when you feel like I'm going too fast or maybe I'm too slow or you've not understood the concept or you want to actually share with us uh, maybe another skill that you've learned out of my discussion, then you're free to raise up your hand or to just text in the chat, then we shall be able to help you. So, 
Now, what I want to just make uh, the easiest game in Scratch is uh, the pedal, uh, the pedal game. And uh, maybe I just want to make a simple, a simple pedal game. But before that, I see uh, Michael has his hand up. Let me give him one second uh, or 30 seconds to say, just unmute yourself, please. And ask. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to share my screen. All right, all right, all right. Just go ahead, please. Thank you, Jesus. Is it chilled? Um, is it? Barnabas says the file can't open. Uh, okay, maybe after Pendo, you also see a share your screen and I see what's the problem. May I can guide you. Um, sir, th this is what I made by for the course of the night. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You didn't sleep. <laughs> Hello, world. Hello, world. Hello, world. Hello, world. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hello, world. Before you went to bed. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm so happy that uh, it's, uh, it's a very good animation and you are going to learn more ways of improving it. I also see. Uh, okay, Barnabas, kindly share your screen and I see how to guide you to open your project. And I also see Nicholas saying, me too, I'm using a phone, but it can't open. Then maybe you'll come next or so you share your screen and we see, we don't want to proceed before everyone is. Uh, now, you don't open like that. You first open Scratch. Go and open the Scratch application. Then go to file. Go to file then load from your computer, load from your computer down. Uh-huh. Then it's there, click on it, it's there. Then open. Yeah, then there, you're good to go. So let's, that's how you can open it. You have to always go to file, then you load it from, unless you have already launched it, maybe online. Let's have uh, maybe uh, Nicholas. Is it Nicholas? Yes, Nicholas, can you please share your phone your screen so I can see, guide you how to. But if you want to open it using your phone, you have to hold the phone in landscape. Oh, sure, sure. Fine, just now what you do, it is in storage, emulated download. So go to, go to Scratch, go to the application. This is the, did you install this, uh, this uh, the, the Scratch version of I sent you for export? Fine, 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 then open it, open it. Okay, let me, let me just, I think I didn't. Okay, what we, we are going to do, just first for, for now, since maybe it may take time, uh, I want you to just use the online version, then uh, I'm going to guide you after the session how to, how to install it. I see as if you haven't installed the application already. All right. Uh, Sorry, sorry about that, but by today you will be sorted. Now, let's try to, 
uh, have some fun. Today, let's try to have fun. Let's make things which we feel like. Don't make what I'm doing. Just understand the concept, then do your own creation. I like what uh, the previous presenter was showing up. And you have to open up your mind. Feel free, relax. If you feel like your things are hard, just walk around the house, get some fresh air, get a cup of water or coffee, then refresh and up and you open up your mind, do whatever you feel like, whatever is in your head, try it out. What I'm here to guide you to understand the concepts, then for you, you're here to make better of what I'm teaching you and also make better than what I'm doing here. If you get a challenge, throughout this uh, process, these two hours, then you always uh, have to ask and raise, feel free to stop me or text in the chat. Uh, now, today let's make a, let's make, let's make uh, a game. So what I'm going to do, I just need, don't need this cut. What I do, I delete the cut. And uh, after deleting the cut, I am going to click on the, to get another sprite. So I have to click on this cut, which has a plus here. When I click it, I will be able to get a ball. Or uh, I think, let me just maybe think about the game, which I, I need to play. Let me just play the one for the ball, which is the easiest actually. So the ball, I can just click uh, sports. Then I get, I like the other ball with, which is yellow in color. So it's not here. I'm going to have to look for it from here. It's here, ball. So just, I want to make a, just like a tennis for a single player. And so what I need, I need a pedal after the ball. So I come here. Now understand, I want now to paint my own pedal. I'm not going to get a pedal which is already pre-made. Uh, pre so this is how you're also going to learn how to paint. So I come here where there is choose a sprite, but I don't click. I instead just hover on this cut, then this other bar comes and I come above here where there is paint, where there's this brush and I click the brush and I'm good to go. I just want to draw a simple pedal. You all know a pedal is something which is just, uh, let's just do something which is uh, rectangular in shape. And so when you click on paint, these are the tools. Uh, if you've done art before, I know everyone has drawn in their primary. We all like to draw, we all use brushes. Uh, we have all used uh, paints, pencils. So this under here, what you see as this, this is to select an object which you are painting and maybe highlight it and make, make changes to it. And this is a, a, a brush which helps you to paint using your favorable color. You can always change the color after clicking on the brush. You change the color from here. Then you choose your favorite color, change the saturation. Then you can also change the brightness to your, uh, to your own, what you really, what satisfies you. Then this is a, what are in my language, maybe in a simple language, I would say this is my saddling. And so someone is playing with my screen, but I'll give you a chance to play the screen after, after the session. Uh, so what I'll say, this is a, a bucket of uh, paint. You can paint your house, you can paint any, any drawing that you've made. And uh, it's, it's, this is also the line. You can also make drawings of your lines in any shape. Then uh, this is a square. You can always draw boxes, either square or rectangle, as you can see. And uh, you, when you draw this, you see there is an outline. You can always increase the outline by increasing these numbers or reducing. Or if you don't want the, your box to have an outline or a different color covering it, you just click on this arrow going down under outline. When you see this is outline, so I click down here, this drop down, it's called a drop down menu. When we learn programming in future, the high end, we shall be, uh, when we are developing websites, we shall be talking about drop down menu. Uh, so this is a drop down here in Scratch. And 
So when I click on this drop down and I just click on I don't this red means that I don't want the I don't want the lines. So I click this red line which has a, a box covering it. And uh, then I'll, when I draw my square again or my shape, it will not have an outline as you can see as compared to these ones. Then the same applies to circle. Uh, you can always click circle, choose the color of your circle. Then you, you can modify the saturation to your own interest. So you can draw a circle like that or you can have it having an outline. If you want it to have an outline, you just click here. Then you choose the color of your outline. If it's green, then you increase the depth. This is like the thickness of the, out, the, cover, the line which is covering the circle. So when I increase it to maybe 10, my, my line, you see, this green will now have a, a bigger outline. If you don't want this outline, you just click on uh, this drop down again, then you click on this line to just draw a line which has, which has no outline like that. So don't worry, I can always undo this work. So if I don't like what I've done here, I can use a rubber which is here, but a rubber would take me a lot of time since I want to remove everything. You, it can, you can also increase the thickness of the rubber and then you just rub, uh, rub let me try to make it uh, 200 such that it's big enough. Then you just rub and things will go away. If you want, you can just undo. This is undoing, going back. Then this is going forward. If I undo, all this stuff is going to go away. And my, so you can just keep on undoing and everything goes away. Then click on the pointer to select what I want. Then this is to change the shape. It's called a reshape tool to change the shape of whatever you have drawn here. We are going to be learning more as I use them. So let me start away by drawing my pedal. I go to square. This is not a square. Okay, it's a shape which can draw a square or a rectangle. And uh, this time around, I need a green. So I, I look for green. Then I try to change the saturation and I increase the brightness such that my when I draw, I, but when I draw, you see, I have an outline of black, but I don't need it. So I first undo this, then I click on this to outline, to remove the outline. And then I just draw a small pedals. I want the game to be a little bit difficult. That's why I'll have a very tiny pedal like that. And after that, I'm going to come and name. You come and name this. So the concepts you are going to understand here, this is a basic game, a very basic game, but I want you to concentrate on uh, the idea or the, the code, the, how we lay the instruction, because when you're developing the advanced games, you'll have to also to use the same concept. So I named this, uh, I call it pedal. And uh, then I draw a small line. So you don't have to, you see my ball is here. When I want to code a ball, I click here and it has many costumes, so it can always change color actually. And uh, it can, then we also have a pedal, when I click on pedal, so you don't have to draw the pedal inside the, the ball here. So you, that's why when I want to draw the danger line, I again come back here and I click on paint, then another sprite is going to start here. So when I come here, I need a line, it's just a dangerous line where if the ball drops down, then the game is over. So I click on this line and I just increase the thickness of the line to maybe 10. I change this color to red because this is like the dangerous line. And then I just come down here and I draw a very straight line like that. So my line can always move such that I hide it down here. No one can see it. Then after that, my pedal will be somewhere here. And then the ball will be coming from random positions, dropping and it has to bounce on this. So I'd be moving this pedal to ensure that the ball doesn't fall on this dangerous line. Now to make your game unique, you can get a background which hides or you draw a background which hides this. Uh, so what I'm going to draw, I come here to paint a background. So when I come here, I will uh, come to paint. 
but let me not paint a background for now. Let me just uh, get a background to save time. Then I get this blue sky, which will hide. It will actually, it doesn't hide my red line. So I need to, let me just delete the, the background. So I go to stage and I delete this background. Then I need to paint my own background such that I hide this red line. So what I do, I will, uh, of course, select maybe color black. Yes, black, black can do. So I come to square and I select color black to hide the line. And uh, I will just come here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So then I remove the outline. Then I draw something like that. And this means that it can it can actually go go up to here like this, such that someone can actually see. So you have to be creative, select whatever you want. So before that, then I have to send it backwards. So I come to code, and uh, no, I come to you can click this line to go down here yeah, a little bit down. So that's, that's it. So I come to my pedal or to my dangerous line. I click on the dangerous line. Then I go to code to, I want the, the line to hide. So what I will do maybe, I will first uh, say when green flag is clicked, I want this to, I go to looks. <coughs> so when I go to looks, I will just say when green flag is clicked, I want this to maybe go to go to front layer instead of front layer. I will say go to back layer. Let me see if I click the green flag. So it still remains there. So what I do, I will go to hide since it can't go behind the background. So I will use the hide such that someone doesn't actually see that the line is there, but yes, the line is there. So someone has to ensure that the ball bounces on this. Now, what we are going to do, first of all, let me first take a question. Uh, someone was saying, hello, uh, I am now in with two kids, and Joshua. Oh, nice to meet you, uh, Fasheva and, uh, and Joshua from Monrovia. We are so happy to learn with you today. Uh, so just to proceed, I want to begin with the, this danger line here, it's sprite one, it doesn't have a name, so I can click here where there's sprite, then I call it danger. You can call it danger line if you want. So mine I'm just going to name. Why we name things is because when your code is now too big, uh, when the instructions, when I mention code, I mean instructions. Sometimes you write uh, a program or in a game which has a lot of instructions, and they may confuse you, but if you keep on naming your sprites, you can easily access them or refer to them whenever you're building your, your project. So right now, I, uh, I want to click now on pedal. I have, this is danger, this is pedal, this is ball. So when I click on pedal, I want to code it, give it instructions. This is the simplest. Uh, so what I do, I say, whenever uh, I can say, so for, for today, let me just use a, uh, green flag just to illustrate, but uh, I discourage you from using green flag, it's too, it's too basic. Uh, if you want uh, to learn how to make buttons, you can always, we shall show you how to make buttons such as someone clicks a button and your game, uh, your game starts. But green flag is the easiest because uh, someone can easily use it uh, uh, by just seeing anyone can see a green flag by just opening scratch. Uh, so when green flag is clicked, what I want to do, I need to get the forever. So I go to forever because whatever I want to put down here, it should be happening continuously. Now, what should be happening continuously? This, someone should be able to move. If someone, now I'm using a computer. So I'm going to say that when someone clicks the left arrow, the, there are keys on the keyboard. We have the key which is pointing up, down, left, right. So I'm going to use the left, right. So when key, 
uh, left is clicked, the ball should go to the left. When key right is clicked, it should go to the right. This is what I'm trying to put here. So I say if. Now, this is now, we want to learn conditions. Conditions, you, most of you may have learned conditions in your school, English. Uh, for example, if I don't have money for breakfast, I won't go to the canteen. You get, if I don't have money for breakfast, I will not go to the canteen. If I do not have a, a, a pen, I will not write. So that's a condition. In order to write, you must have a pen. You get. So even here, when we come to scratch, if if someone is pressing, let, let me get it. So if is here under control, you go to control, then get if. Just put it inside forever. And now you say, if someone is pressing the left key, then move to the left, change X to the left, move to the left. But so it will only change, it will, it will only go to the left uh, or move this to the left like this, if someone has actually done whatever is inside this diamond here. So let me get that condition. I go to sensing for this video. Now, <clears throat> I was saying that uh, I needed to, to make this, uh, this pedal to go right and left to dodge the ball. And what I had to do is to go to uh, get the conditions, the if statement, which I put here. And then I went to sensing, you go to sensing, then you, the if statements are under control and uh, sensing is under. So I need to go to sensing and uh, I get, I get uh, the if, so, uh, I get the condition which I have to put in here. So the condition which I want here is, uh, now let me see if key. So you choose the one which has key, this one, if key. So what are you trying to, to do here? You want to say that if someone is clicking the key, let's say uh, if key up, down, right. So this is my left side. So if key left is key left key, if key, left arrow is pressed, then what should happen? Uh, the ball should go uh, to the, someone is asking, how do we make the pedal? Yeah, I'll go through that maybe after doing the code for the pedal. So I say now, if key left arrow is pressed, I go to motion now to move the, if I want to move the pedal. So I go to motion and this time around, I don't want it to just move steps but I want it to change X. To change X means that it's just going to move continuously. But if you say move, it will just be dropping, dropping as if it's walking. That's why I use uh, change X. And so since it's going to the left, I say change X to minus the opposite direction of 10, so uh, of zero. So that's negative 10. And uh, then the other thing I'm going to do is to do the same thing for the, the key right uh, right arrow. So I go to, uh, to control and I get another if. Just now note where I'm putting this. I'm not putting it inside this if because it won't work. It has to be outside this other if, but inside forever, just below. Below here, as you can see, the notch also shows you that it, can, it has to fix itself, itself there. Then now, the next thing I'm going to do is to go to sensing. And I want to get for get another one for the key space. So key space, and instead of space, I want to click this arrow to choose now uh, if key right arrow. Now, what if someone is clicking the left, the right arrow, the ball should go to the right. So the pedal should go to the right since it's the one I'm programming. So I go to motion, I want it to move. So I gain, I choose uh, change X by 10. Now it has to work. This is the only code for the pedal is easy to code. And this is what you have to, to only write for the pedal. So let me now try it. When I click the green flag, my pedal, when I click this, uh, the right key, it goes to the right. When I click the left key, it goes to, so I keep on moving. And I'm the one who chooses the speed. If you want it to go faster, you can change this maybe 
of 20 is such that let me try to say 20 and we see if I click the green flag, what will happen? Uh, so it goes a little bit faster. So you can do maybe 20 in the level two, but for level one, the first level, let me just keep it at 20 to make it difficult for someone to go to proceed. Now, my pedal is moving, but my ball is not doing anything. So I want now work on my, to work on my ball. And to do that, I'm going to, to click on the ball. I click the ball. I've finished the pedal. Before I go to the ball, uh, Ethan was asking, how do you paint the pedal? What you do, you come here to where they choose a sprite, but you don't click. Rather, you move ahead to, uh, via that uh, vertical lane, then you click paint. So when I click paint, I'm going to see this, uh, this kind of, uh, this is a platform for you to make your own drawing. So I can draw, for now, let me just, uh, you, I'll explain much of the functionality of this uh, as we proceed with projects. But for now, you choose the rectangle here. This is a line, but you click where there's a rectangle, then click fill to change your color. Let me increase the brightness so that I can see my green. So that's my green. And I remove the outline by clicking outline. Then I click on this dangerous line to go away. So for now, just understand that. Then after that, I come and draw the pedal. You can draw it, make it small such that it's not bigger than the ball. So that the game will be a little bit difficult. After that, you come and name it. You name it, paddle. And you're good to go. You start now coding it. You click code and you can now write instructions for it. So for example, now me, I've already, I've already drawn, so I don't need two pedals. I'll just click on this bucket to take it to the bin. And I get back to my pedal. I write the instructions, then I go to ball. Now I want the ball to start moving. <clears throat> Before that, I have a question. Let me see in the chat. Uh, someone has a question. So you keep, keep dropping the questions in the chat. I'll always see them. How do I add levels? We are going to get there. We are still uh, breastfeeding. So we, have, we don't have to bite coconut before uh, taking eating cake. Then someone says, what language is this? This is Scratch, Fahad. This language is called Scratch programming. It's understandable by anyone, even when you don't know anything about computer. Then which one? Then maybe your connection. OK, so there are no questions. Now let's proceed to the, when I get back to the ball, I say, I'm going to code the, the game by saying, uh, when green flag is clicked, let me just use green flag. Let me increase the size of my code here so you can see. This is to zoom in and this is to zoom out. So when green flag is clicked, what I want to do is to take the ball. The ball should always be up here. Let me even put it where I want it to be. Uh, wait. So the ball should be up here actually. It should not be down. It should be somewhere there. So I go to. What I do, I go to motion. Whenever the green flag is clicked, someone goes to, uh, it goes to, there's this go to. This means that it goes to a particular point. We are not going to use the random to take it to the random right now. But uh, for now, just use the go to after putting it where I want to, it to be. So after putting it there, the coordinates will come automatically inside the go to, then you just select them. If they are not, then you can always see the coordinates from here and then you just write them inside here. They have to be the same here. So my ball will always come there whenever the green flag is clicked. But uh, then the other thing I want to say now, the ball should continuously move. So I go to, call, to control and I choose the forever. Uh, you will always use forever if you want something to do continuously or to continue pro, pro uh, continue executing whatever command you write until you decide that it should stop. So when green flag is clicked, continuously move. So I go to motion, 
and uh, I choose move. But remember, if I just do like this, it's going to move horizontally, just like you can see. It's going to move horizontally. So we have to make it to move vertically. But before that, let's first make it to be uh, if on edge, such that if it reaches edges, it, uh, the edge, it bounces back. So you go to motion still and go down here and say if on edge, bounce such that it can come back actually. But I don't need it to move horizontal. I want it to move vertically. So what I will do is I'll point it in direction, point in direction, which will always be up there. So point in direction uh, 180, can write or just, uh, uh, or just uh, use the arrow to move it around. So when I try, uh, my my game again the direction here first of all has to to be it was initially 90. so when i click the green flag it starts going from yeah the direction 19 down to up down to up but that doesn't make it a game because someone can only just move, move the pedal there and they starts winning your game but what we want to do if i'm too fast please text in the chat if you haven't understood. Teacher mine has refused to draw the line. Uh, so, okay, first code, first program the pedal. We can always draw the line at last. It's, the line doesn't even have, need to code. First concentrate and understand how to code the ball, then we shall go to the line. Uh, then my ball is now moving up, down, up, down. Then I want now to set instructions to say, let me first make it go slower by reducing the number of steps to five, such that I can actually code. So my ball needs to recognize, to sense that this is actually a pedal. You see right now, it's just going through the pedal. I want to go to the control and I get the if statement. And I say, if I put it just below the if on edge like that. And I say now, if touching pedal, now you go to sensing, to sense eh? your feeling that now I've reached a pedal, I've touched a pedal. If touching, which is here touching, uh, I can use this one touching mouse pointer and I put it there. But since I'm not working with the mouse pointer, I will click this arrow here, then I choose pedal. If you have already named it, it will always come here. As you see, I have my sprites here. If you, whichever sprite you name here will always be seen here when you're looking for it. So if touching pedal, if touching pedal, what should it do? It should bounce to a random position. It should keep, well, you have played this game, so this should be easy for you to, uh, to come up with better ideas. So right now I say, let me first stop it. If touching pedal, it should bounce. So bouncing here, what I mean is it should turn, uh, turn, so I go to motion. And uh, what I will do is to turn, 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 turn. Let me choose this. So now instead of turning, instead of turning uh, uh, 150, okay, 15 degrees, you can say let it turn. Uh, let me see, what should I pick random from? And let me see, okay. Okay, what you do, you get the random set. We need it to turn to any random position. So you are going to go to operators and you get the pick random degrees. So the degrees are going to be randomly chosen. For example, if I choose from negative 600, it has to be from a negative 60. Uh, maybe to positive 60. It has to be from the negative to the positive. Let me see what happens. Wow, it just goes through. Then it goes to a random position actually, like that. So that's what I wanted in a way. Okay, now, since the ball can now bounce on the pedal and it goes upwards, we want now to, to create score 
this is a simple game, so we have to go so fast. But before even we play score, we need to play a sound to show that it has actually knocked the pedal. So I'll come to sound and I add play start poop sound just below here. Tomorrow I'll be showing you uh, how, how they write this start pop sound in the advanced languages and you see how hard it would be for you. And actually you can always just design in scratch, then you convert to the other high level languages and it still works. So now it can make noise, it can play some pop sound after hitting. You can play around with the angles. Mine, sometimes it's not uh, really accurate because of my angles, but uh, if you choose the angles correctly, or you can say point in direction actually will always start. Let me first get the point in direction from motion. And I try putting it inside here. Point in direction before turning actually, point in direction. And instead of uh, this time round, when I come to direction here, this is uh, this is 90 and this is, uh, so let me try to get this and put it actually inside here. And we say point in direction, negative 60 to 60, then turn, uh, let me say, let me try to just turn 60, 60 degrees and I see what happens. Okay, now that works fine. Yeah. Okay. Now, you sh let me also have uh, this come here such that because it's only going to the positive end. So what I wanted to it's, is for it to be able to move uh, both the other side and uh, also come this side and so to the negative 60, yeah. So now it's working fine. So we now need to put score and we need the ball. Before even we put, we, uh, we put score, we want the ball to change color just to make it uh, a little bit better. And this is now the point where I introduced, yesterday I was talking about the frames, the picture frames, uh, the costumes. So this ball here has costumes, which are many, and now it can change color. So when I come here to, I can just go to looks and I select next costume after playing the sound. So let me increase, reduce this so you can see. Yeah, so this is what I mean. When I click the green flag now, it can change every time it hits the pedal, it's going to change the color and someone is going to enjoy. My ball is too slow, but you can always change the steps from, uh, from this. You can increase the steps from five to any number that you feel like. So let me proceed. Now we want to create score such that when the ball hits the pedal, there is a, there is a score count, which maybe the score increases by one. So I go to variables. I told you variables is where we store information. Just like age is a variable, we can have a variable called age of a particular school, which stores all the ages of all students in a particular school. So here we shall create a variable called score where whoever plays the game, their score will always be stored in this variable, in this bucket called a score. So I can click on variables, then I click on make a variable and I call it score. Then I press okay. And then I have it. You can decide not to show it by unticking this or to show it by ticking it. So you want to say that whenever the green flag is clicked, when the game starts, someone, the game, the score has to set to zero. So set score to zero like that. Okay, before I proceed, I see someone is in the chat. Uh, let me first respond to that person. Can you change the number of costumes if, if they are permanent? Yes, you can always change. 
can always change the number of costumes. Like you can see, when I click on this costume, I can delete it, can delete it, or I can make more costumes by actually coming here. Then I paint another one. I can paint another sprite here, another, another costume here, or delete it. Or I just duplicate, right click, and I duplicate this one, and I just change the color of it. You can always do this. You're in control. Scratch give, makes you do anything that you feel like. It doesn't get you. Uh, it doesn't make you fix to something which is already there. So you can always be creative and make changes the way you want them to be. So after changing costume, what I want to do now, I have set score to zero. So after setting score to zero, whenever the ball, whenever the ball touches. So if touching pedal. I need it to change score. So I click, I get the change. Instead of my variable, I click on this drop down and I choose score. So change score by one. I put it just inside this if here. It's inside this uh, this first if. So let's let's try and see. The score is now zero, then it has gone to one. And every, every time it hits the pedal. If you want it to change by two, you can select change by two, change by three. You are the one who decides how your game should be. So like that. Now let's proceed. So I've added score and the score, whenever the green flag is clicked, it goes to zero like that. And when the game is sto stopped, the score will always appear here. So next thing I want to do is to say, the ball should never touch actually this dangerous line. If it touches the dangerous line, the game is over. Now at this point here, that, that's where we, as someone was asking, actually, how do I draw, uh, how do I draw this line? So let me now explain to you. You come to paint, uh, to choose a sprite here. Don't click here, but choose paint a sprite. And then, uh, And then you select line. This is a line. Select line, then select outline here to increase, hope to change the color to maybe red. Let me increase the brightness. So it's now red. And uh, you can modify that by maybe changing the saturation. And to increase the thickness of the line, how thick do you want your line to be? So I can make it maybe 14. And I just come down here. I draw the line straight. It has to be straight. Then after that, I name it. I come here and I name it danger. And I can now come click on it and move it downwards. Down. And then I paint my stage to hide it. So the code, the code which made my hand line to to hide actually was just this, which has, uh, when green flag is clicked, the line should hide such that the person playing doesn't know that there's a line down there. So that's it. That's how you draw how you draw the line. Now, when I come to, I don't need to code the line, so I come back to ball and say if I go to control and I get another if, which is if. And I put it just down there, so I reduce this, so I get enough space. If touching, so I look for touching under sensing. If touching, uh, if touching, instead of a mouse point, I'm going to select uh, if touching red line, which is danger, I named it danger here. Yeah. So if touching danger, then <coughs> say, it has to say game over, let me speak. Let me speak. So I got extensions and I uh, just get the text to speech. And here instead, whenever the green flag is clicked, I first have to set, I first set the language here to English. Then I set the voice to alto. And now here I will speak. Speak is going, whenever it touches the red line, it will speak game over. Your score is maybe there is where now this is where we want to bring in a concept of operators. So instead of just saying going over, it should also read out the score of someone. So this is how you do you get the, you go to operators and you get the join. There's this one which has join apple and banana. 
I want to join what I what what the word game over and also the variable what, whatever is in the scope. And this is how I'm going to do it. I join. I put it just where where my words were inside, such that it falls inside like that. And here I'll just type here game over. Your score is your score is, and now I put where there is banana, I just go to variable and I get score and I put score inside variable. It may seem difficult because you're doing it for the first time, but when you practice, it's going to be fun and more even easier. And at this point now, after saying game over, uh, your score is, then you can also maybe, you stop the game, so I go to control and I stop all, stop all is just here. Let's try out, <clears throat> our game should be in its final stages. So let's see, green flag. So let me let it fall. <clears throat> Okay, let me first show my show my, my my line. Let me go to my dangerous line here. Let me see. Let me show. Game over, your score is zero. Okay, so let me just, uh, you can always make the line the same color with this. You can make this whole painting also the color of the line. Now here, when let me try to now play the game. Here with you. So green flag, my score goes to zero. Now it's one counting. And this game is over actually. And that's how simple it is. This is the most, the simplest game that you can make. If and uh, people can actually get excited over it. So let me let it fall. Let me let it fall. Game over. Your score is seven. Then it says my score. Or maybe it can now. When someone reaches, you can say when someone reaches score twenty, it goes to the next level. We are going to teach about levels, but not today. So let me take any questions. You should have done this. If someone has already finished this and you want to share your screen, let me give you two minutes uh, for all the people who want to share their screens. You share within seconds, such that you give a chance to another, another person to do that. Uh, let me, you just raise up your hand if you want to share your screen. Uh, Ethan, I need help, teacher, I need help. All right. How can I help you? Let me first stop my screen so that I allow someone to share their screen whenever they want. So Ethan, which help do you need? I hope you can unmute yourself. Teacher, I didn't really finish. I didn't really finish everything. What is the change? I can see it's touching pet. You called you as pillow. Yes, fine. Now, uh, first click the green flag. Stop. Click yes. the green flag. Click the green flag. Oh no. Oh, okay, stop, 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 stop. First up, hold, put, place your ball up. Your ball, place it up just the way it first placed mine. Up at the extreme end. The ball. Aha. Uh -huh. There. Now, come to, are you seeing under X and Y code? Down, just down, down. Down be below the, the ball, below the ball. Where? Below the ball. 
no, 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 no. Below the bowl, just below the black, the black painting. Are you seeing where you have the black, the black rectangle? Yes. Now, are you seeing there where we have X and Y? Yes. Uh -huh. So this is 49. Are you seeing Y is 49, but yours here, when you go back to your code, you see yours is 175. So change 175 to 149. No, not there. Change the where there is code after when green flag is clicked. Uh, change that 149. It has to always be the same. This point ball is now at this point here, which is uh, where you're seeing your, your coordinates. Okay, fine. Now, the next thing is going to be uh, to if touching, so you, your ball actually, it it first, uh, whenever the green flag is clicked, it goes upwards, then it points downwards. Mm -hmm. Then now forever it is moving very good. Now, if touching pillow, you say uh, point in direction, you go to motion. Uh -huh point in direction, put it there, then go to operators and look for random because you want it someone not to guess where it is actually coming from. So that's why you use the pick random. I can see Tendo is raising up their hand. So you come next after, after Ethan. Go to, it's under operators. Did I go where? Operators, operators, which is green. Then pick random is there, pick random one to 10. Then put it where there is 90. Inside. Aha, uh -huh, like that. <laughs> then now say, pick random from, you can say from negative 60 to 60. Where there is one, you put 60, negative 60, then two, positive 60. So there I just put minus 60 to go to the opposite direction, yeah. Then there you say 60. Good. Now, the next thing you're going to do is to turn. So you go to motion again and you choose turn. I turn. Yes, any turn, any, any, you choose that one which is in clockwise. Uh, then you also just right click where they speak random, right click where they speak random. No, above, above, right click, right click. Then duplicate and put it where there's 15, like that. So now your ball should be able to try, 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 try click the green flag. So it can now bounce up. Try to move your do. Did you code your pedal? No. You first code your pedal. Say you you code your pedal. You say when green flag is clicked. When green flag is clicked, what you have to do is to get the forever. So go to control and get forever. Hmm. Meaning that whatever you're going to put inside the forever is going to happen continuously. So you go to control again and get the if condition. Now you want to set conditions that if someone is, if this key, left key is pressed. So you say if, get it and put it inside forever. Good, then go to, where do you go to get the if key pressed? I want you to guess, anyone to guess? Let's get, yeah. let someone in the chat, someone tell us where what we should do next. Uh, who knows uh, where do we get the if touching if uh, if key left key if key left arrow pressed where do we get it is it under motion under sensing under control under operators or where let someone help us from sensing thanks a lot go to sensing thanks Sendo. you go to sensing and. Uh, you choose that one, it has its key space pressed here. If? 
he you start with left arrow. If someone presses, you're going to be using the left arrow and the right arrow on your keyboard or whichever the keys you choose. Then if, now if you, if that key is pressed, then you go to motion and change X by minus 10. You look for change X. This one. Yeah. Now, instead of saying mm, change X by 10, change X by minus. So put minus before 10, minus 10, yeah. It has to be minus 10. Minus A. 10, 10. Or whichever number that you choose. As you're not studying, minus 10, minus one, zero. Yeah, then that's all. So the next thing you're going to do, go to control again and now do for the left. Do the same thing. I want you to try and do the same thing for the right, for the right arrow. Let me see what you can do on your own. No, no, that that has to be changed because it's going to be positive. Uh, it has to go negative and positive. So that's just then you don't have to change it. For the right, the right is the positive side. The, the left is the negative side. Yes. So try to start and we see. Now use the arrows to move. Move, use the right, left and move. Uh -huh. Okay, you first go, first stop, first stop. Then go to click your ball now, click on your ball. Is it a beach ball? Yeah, click on your beach ball. Then in the code of beach ball, you say, uh, first click where the direction below. Okay, make it 90, just type 90. Oh, oh just anything anyway, just make it 90. Okay, then now try to write, just type, type 990 using your keyboard. Mm. Now, after that, the next thing you're going to do is uh, Try, try clicking the green flag and we see. Okay. Now you create, you stop, you stop. That's now working fine. Thank you, teacher. Yeah, now you add score. You go to variables. Variables, variables, variables. Then make a variable called score. Maker variable called score. Sport score. Yeah, score. Score 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 is uh score is actually is but anyway it's okay it's okay. Now. Put get the set. Are you seeing where you set my variable? Because whenever someone starts, well, the game, it should first go to zero. This, the score should always be zero when someone is starting the game. So you you click where is my variable, set my variable. 
set my variable there. Just read, read below the score, below score. Uh -huh. Below, below, below that. Below set, are you seeing where they set? This one. Uh, put it just below where the when green flag is clicked. And then click on that arrow. First click on that arrow. Uh -huh. There. Then click on that arrow which drops down. Uh -huh. Uh, then that means that you're starting zero whenever someone clicks the green flag. The next thing you're going to do is you say, well, if you can't get the change, you change from uh, where they change my variable, change my under, under variable still, but instead of my variable, change it to score. Yes. Then put it, if touching pedal, then change score by one. Put it inside that if statement anywhere inside the if touching pedal. No, inside if, yes, inside the if. Perfect. Then you can go to sound and get a start sound. Uh, maybe uh, you can choose your own sound, but for now sound is just above there. I mean where there is a code. Just go back, sound, sound. Sound is below looks. Yeah, then start sound, pop. The second one, just use that one, say start sound and put it just below the change for one. And put it just below? Below the change score by one, it has to be in that if, you're meaning that if it touches, if the ball hits the pedal, it makes some noise. Yeah, so uh, that should work for first try, first try. Okay, now this, uh, this uh, as you do the same for, you first move it up and you do the same for the red line. The one for the red line should be easy. <coughs> okay, so first stop. Now go go down and uh, first uh, zoom out. First zoom out such that you can add code below. Okay, so you first name your sprite one. You call it danger or you call it anything. That's the bad line, the bad guy. You don't have to leave space, but it's okay. So you go to the ball and now code, add the instruction for the red line. So you see uh, just below where there was the if for the pedal, you first start, uh -huh, good, good. Again, now below there, I want you to add another if statement. Below the other if, now and that's one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, below that if. Perfect. Then you say now you go to where do you go if I want to say if touching bad line, you do the same if touching bad line. Try to think if touching bad line. People, your friends can help you via the chat. They can always tell you. You be reading the chat. Uh, your friends are telling you where to go. Okay, Tendo is saying you go to sensing. So you have to go to sensing. And then choose if touching, touching, the touching mouse pointer is just above. Well. Above, up again. Touching mouse pointer is the first 
So instead of touching mouse point, I just click that arrow and change it to touching bad line. Now, if touching bad line, you should uh, say, so you should uh, say, you can go to extensions and bring the text to speech. Click on the extensions down. Then text to speech is there. Yes. And just uh, first set the language, put it just above where there's green flag. You first, it has to be set first before you come down. Yeah. Then you set also the, you can also set the voice. Good. No, saying you don't put it there. Saying has to be inside the if. So you remove it. Don't take, don't take it. Just put it somewhere, this side, down. Because all your code is going to go. First, drag your code down where this uh, set set. Uh huh. Yes. Then remove that. Very good. Then take that back. Mm. Mm, just go continue until you reach where you're going to put the instructions. Now say, if touching bad line, speak, game over. Well? You say speak, you know where you get the, the speak, the code for speak. Where do you get it? Speak is under text to speech, where you got the set. Yeah, it's the first one, speak, hello. Uh, then you go to to what you go to operators to get the join join banana and so you got operators to get the join such that it can speak mm -hmm. so join apple banana is down there put it where there is hello then where there is apple you write game o game over Game over, comma, your score is, I know let's put a space. Your score is, then where there's banana, uh, your score is, okay. Is, then where there's banana, go to variables and get score, put it where there's banana, go to variables. Get score, are you seeing the score there? Then put it where there's banana, inside banana. Then go to control and stop all, get the code called stop all under control, just below. Stop call. Put it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you're, you're done. So your game has to work now. Thank you. Okay, then you now can try it out. Then you stop sharing your friend also. Too. Okay, nice. So let's proceed. If you have any question, also uh, you can always raise up your hand, and we see how we can support you. If if anyone has a question, otherwise I'm going to we see Fahad. Fahad, please go ahead, unmute yourself and ask your question. X. Uh, Nicholas asks, what does X mean? So X means <coughs> from it's a horizontal axis. Let me, uh, when you study mathematics in future, you're going to learn that when someone is going 
when you're walking straight from in front or going behind, that's the X direction in mathematics. And when you're going up, that is called the Y direction. And this is how the world was made. It follows this. These numbers were got from uh, uh, when the earth was actually born. When the earth was born, going down was called going to the negative Y and going up was called going to the Y direction. Going to the left was called going to the minus X and going to the right is the plus X. So that's what X actually means. Now, X is just a direction on the horizontal axis or on the horizontal when someone is moving straight in front, behind, that's X. Going up, that's Y. I hope that uh, is, uh, helps you to understand that. So Fahad, please unmute yourself and speak. Uh, teacher, my ball stops, but it doesn't say the word. Okay, let me give you a chance to share your screen, then I continue. Share your screen, Fahad, and we see what the problem is. Then maybe something is wrong with your code. But it should actually work once you've been followed or I'm using a phone. Okay, sorry. <laughs> now, a phone and I don't know, but if you're using a phone and a computer, I want you to follow the same steps which you're seeing on my screen here. Uh, let me share my screen. So you see on my screen, if I wanted to say, if you wanted to stop this say, join game over, your score is, is inside, is just inside this if statement. My if is not, the problem you may have made is you have put the if inside another if, but if it's outside the other if, then it has to work. And then put this speak, uh, it's got from uh, extensions, and then after going to extension, you get the, the text to speech, which is here, which is going to help you to get this. Uh, you, why it's not speaking, maybe you did not set the language here. So whenever the green flag is clicked, you first set the language, set the voice here, and then you get the speak, put it down here, and then you are, go to operators, get the join, and then you uh, put the score and also the words you want to appear there. Okay, now let's try to learn something different before our five o'clock reaches. Let me just charge my phone. Okay. Now after this, you have to always save your work. So to save my work, I'm going to go to, this is now Scratch Project, so I delete this and I say maybe my first game. You can name it what you want, me, my first game. Then I click file and I click save to your computer like that. And then I just click it because it's going to, uh, to download, then it's saved. So, Tendo, you have a question. Unmute yourself as I'm restarting this. So I click on file and then I click new project. So I want to do something different before actually time comes up. Uh, bed says not hearing, maybe my network. I don't know whether everyone, is, there, is everyone not hearing me or it's only uh, a bit. Oh, I'm also saying I'm, uh, I'm having a few network issues, but I am ready now. You can unmute yourself and speak. If you have challenges, we shall also share the recorded video of this. You want to share your screen, Tendo, or you want to just speak? Okay. When the network, I think this uh, network always this up this 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 But whenever you are ready, you can always allow you to to speak or to share your screen. So let's now do something different. Right now, I want us to try to learn how to uh, to paint. So I'm going to paint something, maybe to paint sprites. Should we do painting sprites? 
always learn about clones. So let's learn about clones. So I want to show you a project which uh, makes something to keep on multiplying without having to paint many uh, or, to, or to put many sprites. For example, let me, let me just get this, let me delete this cut and I get, uh, I come here, then I get another, I just want an apple. So I will go to, uh, to food and I look for, okay, let me get a strawberry, no? I need, uh, I need an apple. All right, so I have my apple there and what I want to do with the apple is to make the apple duplicate itself and there be many apples. For example, if you're making maybe rain in your animation, those raindrops, you don't have to draw the raindrops. You just draw one raindrop and they keep on dropping, many of them actually. So I want to make fruits which drop, but they drop, uh, uh, they keep, uh, you have to draw, I only have one fruit. So what I do, I go to events and I say, when, uh, Space bar is clicked. Let me use space bar for today. When space bar is clicked, let me increase my size. Yeah, size of my. Okay. Now, when space bar is clicked, what I want to do is I want to go to, or maybe to hide. Let me first hide. This uh, this should not be seen. So whenever the green flag is clicked, I'm going to hide this apple and uh, what I want to do is to take it upwards. So it should go maybe to this position here. Hmm? It's there and these are the X coordinates. So it goes to, I go to motion and I go to that position. I have a question. I never understood how we go to include score. Maybe we shall understand when we are making another game. So don't worry, we shall go through another game. So we have issues with hearing you, we can't hear you. Ah, you can't hear me. Maybe try turning on your audio, I don't know. Because I don't know, if you're hearing me, please text in the chat. I don't know whether everyone is not hearing me. How many of you are hearing me? How many of you are hearing me? Just text in the chat if you're hearing me. Okay, maybe uh, maybe Kevin, uh, try to check your microphone whether you enabled it. If not, maybe you try leaving and then joining to see if that is fixed. All right, so Let's just give each other uh, two minutes. Let's take two minutes to take, just go and grab a cup of coffee, get some cup of coffee or get some glass of water and take while walking. Don't take while sitting, just move around the house or just move outside and breathe in and out while taking a glass of water or coffee. Let's use, uh, Two minutes exactly, then we restart at exactly, let me see. We restart at exactly 1645. Feel free, just walk around. And uh, for now, if you want to share your screen as we are doing a break, you can share your screen and show us what you, you want to show us. But let everyone try to take some water, some glass of water, and also try to take some a uh, cup of coffee if you have, and refresh and move, uh, move around while taking the water. Then we shall restart uh, within the next 15 minutes to finish today's session. Let me also take some, some coffee here. I see Ethan, Ethan, you can please unmute and be speaking if you want. This is a time for break. Oh, sorry teacher. I, I was putting up my hand because I, I was saying, like I was putting it because I was like, meaning like you, you're like, like I could hear you. Oh, 
All right, you, you take some water. Go and get some glass of water. Okay. So as you guys are taking some glass of water, let me share with you some project which was, which was made by someone. Let me first save this one. This is huge. I'll restart from here after showing you. So let me save this to my computer. Then I open, I want to load a project which I want to show you, which is called, uh, Or video sensor, no? Yeah, visual poetry, yeah. It was made by someone in Scratch. So uh, let me first uh, stop this. Now, so this, this game was actually made by someone on Scratch. And uh, let me try to play it. And you see what we were talking about yesterday via visual sensing. Uh, when we were trying to use the video sensing uh, tool. So when I click the green flag here, <coughs> the video is going to come up. So when I try to move, you see, the words keep, when I, I take them this side, my hand goes with the word. When I take them, so let me first increase this. So I want someone to challenge me if you can really challenge this person who made this, this kind of thing. The numbers keep on okay, popping. If they take them in front, the numbers go in front. If they take them this side, they go with the hand like that. So this is also some kind of game which is really made using video sensing. We tried moving the ball yesterday by moving the hands using the video sensing. I want someone, if you are able to make such a project, and then you will join our challenge. See? So we are left with 30 seconds to go. You should be almost. If you want to attend, I see your hand up. You can raise, you can just unmute yourself and uh, please uh, speak. Tendo, please unmute yourself and speak. I'm also taking my water. Let me also see in the chat. Uh, teacher, we can't hear you. Teacher, stop all is under what? It's under under control. Kevin, you try to leave the meeting and join again. Then you join with your with the audio of your of your device. Maybe that's the because there is uh, everyone is hearing me apart from you. Then. Um, I hope everyone has taken some, some water or tea. Oh, so we have, <laughs> we have Tendo Michael and uh, we have two Tendos. So I will always call you Michael, don't worry. Now time is up. Let's 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 finish this. Let's finish this. We have twelve minutes left. So let's get back now to work. Can you make games that are on phone? Yes, you will get there. You can't start from those games. They will be difficult for you. You have to first learn 
how what is really done behind behind them and this is what we call the basics so when you get to the other stages of the training you'll be learning some advanced games which where do we find to move the pedal left and right uh i will not go through that again we used uh, the left and the right you click on the let me let me let me open that Okay, maybe we shall learn. Uh, let me first load that and I show you. Let me load that. So this is my first game. <coughs> so you say it's pedal. This is the only code which you write under the pedal, which will enable it to move left and right. Try to, to look at this, this code. Barnabas. This is the code. When green flag is clicked forever, if key left arrow pressed, then uh, change X by negative by minus 10. And uh, if key right arrow pressed, change X by 10. Go to the right. The first one is go to the left. That's it. So let me just turn off my video sensing. It's making my video too. So turn off. Yeah. Now, so that should be it. Let's now do something else. You can always try out this, it's easy. Let me start uh, a new, I already, I, I already made my project called Field, so it's here. So before we went for a break, we were saying that uh, when, when the space bar is pressed, this ball has to hide, then go to X and go to that position. So when I click the green flag, oh, the space bar, it doesn't appear. And that's what I wanted to do. It's the clone. Now I want to show you how to make a clone or how to make things to multiply just one thing to keep on multiplying or producing more of itself. So I go to control and I get the forever. <laughs> and uh, forever, what do I want to do? I want to create a clone of myself, which is still under control. So under control, I will get uh, this create clone, it's here. Down is among the last under control. When I start as clone, create clone of myself, this is what I want get clone of myself, then I put it there. After how long? If you just don't put time, then it will keep on doing it continuously without a time lag and you won't even see what, what is happening. That's why I still go to control and I get wait. And maybe I can say wait five seconds before creating another clone. Now that's it. I'm now creating the clone. Now I want the clone to show. I've already created it. I'll still go to control and I get down, down, down where there are clones. Clones are always the last under control. So I get when I start as clone, which is just an, like an event. When I start as clone, what should happen? Uh, what should happen is I should uh, show. So I go to looks and then I show. <coughs> after showing, after showing, then I need to now keep on moving or point down, downwards. So I'll go to motion and I say point. Uh, okay, let me first go to, I first go to that position, but this may confuse you, but it's just as simple as saying, uh, instead of just going to one particular point, this right and left is X, as I told you, the X axis. So it has to be random. It has not to be, I, want, I don't want the future to be coming from one place. So I want to put here where there's 33 X random. I go to pick random and I put there where there was, where we had a negative 33. And instead I just say pick random from negative, maybe 200 to 200, which is now having no minus. So let me just put this down here. So we can see how I reduce this like that. Now, 
just to proceed, uh, after taking it to a random position and it has shown, then I go to my, to my point in direction under motion and I say point in direction and the direction has to be downwards, which is 180. Then I go to control and I get a forever, put it down here. And forever, what do I want to do? I want it to move, to move downwards. So I go to motion and I select move 10 steps. Instead of 10 steps, I can put six steps such that it's a little bit slower. Then after that, we have less than five minutes. Uh, after that, what I have to do is now, since it can move, and uh, let me try to see when I click the space. So when I click space, the, after every five seconds, the clones are going to be coming. As you can see, they drop down. And I want to say, if, it, if now they should now be disappearing when they reach down here. So that's how you create a clone. A clone, they keep on repeating. I have only one apple, but they keep on, uh, on repeating themselves. And you can also try to think about how you can make a game out of this. Of Youth Blast, this is how they, when you play Fruit Blast, this is what always happens. This, I'm just illustrating, this is not a game, but you can get an idea of Fruit Blast and you make such a game or any game which has bullets coming. You have only one bullet, but in the gun, but it keeps on producing many bullets as clones. This is the, uh, the idea behind uh, things coming, reproducing themselves or multiplying. It's all about using the clone. <laughs> Then if you want them to delete when they reach uh, down here, you can say if uh, you go to control and say if maybe y is greater than, so you say you go to operators and get the greater sign, which is here. And now you go to motion and say if y position, the position for y, if y position, just the last around here, the last codes under motion. If y, now this is x, y is moving up and down, as I told you, vertically. So if y position is greater than maybe this point, uh, this point can be, uh, let me see, let's say if it's greater than maybe 10 or one, then, uh, not greater than, it should say less than. Let's use less than. Less than. If y position is less than, uh, let's say one, then you delete this clone. You go to control and delete, which is the last one, delete this clone like that. So the clone actually you can say if it's greater than negative, maybe 200. Let's try that and see. It's less than negative one. This. Mm, that's too far. You can say less than negative 50 or 10. That's also too near. Let's say 100. Yeah, so they keep on disappearing when they reach wherever you want them to, to disappear from. So if I said maybe 150, yeah, let me see what would happen. Yeah, so that's how we can make rain, you can make bullets, you can make the games of field plots. If you want all, all your sprites to be creating clone, you'll be adding, you'll be using this kind of code as you can see. So for now, I'm going to stop uh, for today and then we shall share with you more slides which have what we haven't covered today and you try going through and also practice. Today we got a challenge and uh, we wasted much time when my computer had the power blacked out and I had uh, to switch over to the, to the laptop. But then I need a question. I need some people to ask me questions before we end today's discussion. 
So if you have a question, just raise up your hand and ask a question. Then if you want to show us what you have made, also raise up your hand and then I will allow you to do that. Yes, let me see Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, Nicholas, how do I, you can unmute yourself. Okay, Nicholas, you can unmute yourself and speak. When I, I have seen you have tried to put this other part, whereby it's not the same line going downwards, how is it working? That other second part. Which part? This other one, which starts with when I start as a clone, show that one. When I start as a clone. So you rephrase your question. Yes. What were you asking about it? Sorry. Yes, like why isn't it also following downwards? No, it's following because it's a, a, a program on its own. Each program has to have its own start. You get it? Eh? Because there is no way you can put this to follow this because this program can work without this program. And this one also can work with this without this, but they just need each other. Here, you are, more, you are, you are restarting. This is a new pro pro program but it is relying on this one because of this clone. You have created a clone, but then you can't again create a clone and put the code for clone inside here. Yeah, that's why we start another program, which is now specific for the clone here, you get. And sometimes if you don't want yes. your code to be very long, you can always be having many events, then you have short, short codes like that. So there are the events that keep changing the each event changes the program. So this, uh, yeah, it, this, this event is just for now showing each sprite. This one is for making uh, the clones, you get it? This one is just like the mother. Yes. This is the mother, its role is to just produce the children. And now this one is the father. The, the role of the father is to now make the children seen outside, to, take the, to carry the children to the people outside, you get it? This one makes it to show yes. and make the child to move as you can see the child, but this one can't make the child to move. The role of the mother is to just produce and the father is to help the child to move and then to also be seen to in the public. I hope I've tried to explain. Yes. Okay. So let's get another question. Carlos, Kevin, Ebed, uh, anyone wants to share your screen, what you've made. I always like at the end of any session, someone to show me something which wows me, which surprises me, which they have made. So if you have some such a, such a game or such a, a project, you just raise up your hand and uh, I can allow you to share your screen. But we have finished. So let me stop sharing, stop recording the, this meeting. Anyone can leave.